Hey folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiatore, and here's a side sword. Um, as promised in my previous video, talking about gymnasium sabers, um, I said that I would talk about Cavitan, link below, Cavitan's other products, and one of the other things that I got from them was a side sword. I've always fancied having a side sword. Um, so it was on my kind of uh, on my to get list and I saw they did pretty nice ones for pretty good prices um, So I ordered one and I have not regretted it. It is a it is a lovely thing um, So I have used and handled other people's side swords over the years for those of you who don't know What is a side sword? Well a side sword is essentially a bit like a rapier Okay, but it's a bit like an arming sword as well. It kind of um, the side sword itself is a modern term It's not a period term you do occasionally find texts from the 16th century that refer to a spada de lato or side sword, but they seem to just be talking about the sword that you wear, which technically could be any kind of sword, okay? Um, but in the modern world, these have come to be known as side swords, and to us, what they kind of fill is the gap between, the developmental gap between the arming sword and the rapier. That is, they are a cut and thrust sword. This has a particularly narrow blade, it has to be said, um, but side swords can be much broader than this. They can have a more like a medieval arming sword blade, something like that. Okay, um, so they have a cut and thrust blade and then they have a degree of complex hilt. Now they can indeed, you can get side swords which have very complex hilts, like full swept hilts. Um, if they become a full basket, we tend to know them by other names. For example, a schiavona, you could say is a type of side sword with a basket hilt. Um, but uh, generally speaking, side swords have finger rings um, as a minimum, pretty much. Sometimes they have a knuckle bow, sometimes they have a side ring, sometimes they have a pair of side rings, sometimes they have four side rings, okay? Um, so they tend to have what we call a side sword, and it's a very, very subjective term. They tend to have something like a simple rapier guard but um, not normally as complex as most rapiers are. And that's partly to, due to date, okay? So the majority of side swords, or at least the, what people think of as side swords, um, are from the 16th century, um, and um, they sort of started, they come about earlier than the rapier does, okay? So the first sign of side swords, really, is actually in the 15th century. This is what a lot of people don't necessarily realise is that um, these finger rings actually started appearing in the middle of the 15th century, um, in the middle of the 1400s. And in fact, the earliest appearance of just single finger rings is right at the beginning of the 15th century, around the year 1400, in fact. Um, and there's a famous sword that's now in the Royal Armouries in Leeds um, from the Alexandria Arsenal, um, that's an Italian-made sword um, that has a single finger ring and dates to about 1410, if I remember correctly. So what we could call side swords really are a development of the arming sword and had been around since the 15th century, but when most people talk about side sword, when they say they do side sword, they're mostly talking about 16th century Italian treatises, for example, Marozzo, Mancellino, Dalla Gocchi, these, these types of, uh, of treatises. So the Cavitan um, side sword, what do, I, what do I think of it? I think it's really great, okay? If I were personally choosing again, I'd probably ask for a slightly broader blade. Um, simply because it's a really narrow blade and it's kind of, to me, it's almost more like a rapier blade. That being said, um, you've got to remember that a blunt sword is usually narrower than its sharp equivalent would be for weight and weight distribution because, of course, if you imagine the blunt edges being forged out to sharp, you'd end up with a, uh, with a slightly broader blade anyway. But even still, considering how narrow the blade is up here, it's almost been, it's almost gone beyond being a cut and thrust sword to being a thrust only sword really. So it's a bit like um, a kind of proto rapier in my mind. And I would prefer to, for a side sword to differentiate it from rapier. In fact, my, ironically, my rapier actually has a slightly broader blade than this, but I do have a particularly large rapier. Um, I would, you know, to, to kind of characterize it as a side sword rather than a rapier. I think I would rather have a slightly broader blade on it. But that's my personal taste. And what I would say is, despite the fact that I would prefer the look of a broader blade and perhaps the feel of a broader blade, in terms of actually sparring and fencing, having a narrower blade is maybe no bad thing. These can still hit pretty hard. These hit not quite as hard as the sabers. Um, here's just one of the sabers for comparison. Uh, the sabers do hit a little bit harder, um, but, um, they, the fact that they don't hit that hard is kind of good for a training weapon, isn't it? Because remember that when you're fencing, you're not actually <laughs> aiming to do damage to the other person. You're aiming to 
hit them and hopefully not injure them. Uh, so actually having an arrow blade maybe is no bad thing. Um, the hilts are very, very nice. Um, they're simple, utilitarian for the price. I think they're really good. You see we've got uh, turned out um, quillons here that provide a little bit of extra protection to the wrist and to the inner line to the, to the hand when you've turned the, turned the weapon slightly. Um, the finger rings are large enough for a uh, glove such as a red dragon glove. Let's pull a red dragon glove on here. So we can absolutely fit a red dragon glove in there without, and for me this is important, without the hilt being overly large. One thing I really hate is that some Hema swords have overly massive looking hilts in order to fit a padded glove in and they end up looking dog ugly, okay? Not to say all dogs are ugly, but um, uh, essentially this still keeps the look more or less of a, a kind of correctly proportioned and sized small sword hilt, um, but you can still use a padded glove with it. The pommels are nice. The pommel's a disc pommel, okay, that's screwed on with a nut. Um, so you can dismount it or you can change all the bits. You can clean them, you can do whatever you want. Um, but thanks to the nut. You could ask for it to be peened if you wanted, but incidentally, I've not had to, none of the Kavitan weapons I've had to tighten since I got them. They've all remained tight. That nut goes down slightly inside, so it's actually got quite a lot of biting um, area. Um, the knockabow is really good. The hand protection. Now, let's just talk about this. So this is not a criticism of the Kavitan side sword. This is just a note, really, about side swords. So I'm principally a sabre fencer, and I do some sword and buckler, some long sword, some spear, some various things. I don't really do side sword, um, and I, um, but I do do some sword and buckler. Now with a buckler, no problem at all. However, using a single side sword, I kind of make it up as I go along, um, and I have I have been to some Morozzo classes over the years, so I do know some ba you know I know the guards and I know the cuts and um, I know the basics of Bolognese side sword, but I'm not a Bolognese side sword fencer. So when I come to use a, a side sword, I just apply the knowledge I have from other systems, a bit of rapier, bit of sabre, bit of long sword, bit of arming sword, um, and I apply that to use of this. And it works okay, um, works fairly well. You can use these kind of like a sabre. Um, there are two things, amusing things, kind of, um, that I discovered. Um, so in the way that I used the side sword, there were two errors. Number one, the rear quillon gets caught on stuff. <laughs> um, now I'm used to moving sabres in certain ways. And when I did that with this, I actually managed to connect um, the rear quillon to a part of my fencing jacket, uh, which in the middle of a fencing bout is really quite, not embarrassing, probably could be embarrassing to some people. I just thought it was really funny. So I went to make a moulinet. So I think I guarded and I brought the sword around here and it basically got caught in the, in the fabric of my jacket. I was like, ah! <laughs> Um, so that's one thing is that side swords are not the same as sabers. They have guards, okay? They have quillons. But the second thing uh, was a little bit more painful lesson, and that is to remember you don't have an with this one anyway. You don't have really any side protection here, and so one of the blows, I think it probably bounced off the blade, came down and caught me right on the finger there. Now I was wearing my good old red dragon gloves. Actually, not that one. That's a new one, but my old red, red dragon gloves, which are a bit more flexible. And um, it protected my finger, but it did hurt, okay? So you've got to wear good gloves with these, um, especially if you're sticking the finger over the guard, as you're supposed to do with a side sword. Um, and that finger is vulnerable. Now, there is a few ways, a few things you could do about that. Number one, you could just glue on or attach on some extra protection for that index finger there. Or you could get <laughs> you could get a side guard. Okay, you could get a, um, a type of hilt that has a side ring. But really, I mean, oh, it's the second time I've hit that light. Um, although that ring there provides a bit of extra protection to the blade coming directly down towards the finger, it's not that much, and it's not it's it's quite easy for a blade to completely bypass that and hit you in the finger anyway. If you're not very good at doing side sword like I'm not. Um, so there we go, really just to be aware that you don't have as much hand protection with a side sword as you do with a sabre. Like, you know, newsflash. <laughs> um, but in terms of the quality, absolutely great. I will, full disclosure, I very slightly bent this blade, hitting um, someone quite hard, and they put a parry in, and uh, I, my edge alignment was bad, and the sword twisted in my grip slightly, and very slightly bent the blade. I straightened it again under my foot, 
no problem at all. It was just a very, very slight curve to one side. I dragged it through under my foot and it was straight again, okay? One thing about straight blades as opposed to curved saber blades is that straight blades are easier to bend than um, curved blades, partly by virtue of the fact it's easier for the blade on impact to roll. That seems to happen less with sabers um, or curved blades. Okay, so, uh, but in thrusts, I mean, I've thrust with this, I've hit bucklers with this, I've done hit masks with this, all this kind of stuff. No problems at all. Good edge durability, no edge damage, blades being great, everything stays tight in the hilt, there's been no serious damage to the guard, the guard's comfortable, it's big enough for a padded glove, the grip is all secure and tight, no movement there whatsoever, it's a nice shape. This uh, bulge here fits very nicely so those two fingers go above the bulge, the little finger below the bulge and the, your index finger over the um, quill on, over the front quill on and through the fingering. So great, I highly recommend Kvetan um, side saws. In fact, of production, you know, fairly cheap, fairly affordable um, uh, side swords, I can't think who can compare with them actually. Um, I mean, I do know other side swords. I'm not going to mention other specific makes because I don't think that's fair because I might mention some and not others. But um, I do know other people using other makes for side swords. And I've got to say, for a kind of around £200 um, entry level side sword that will probably last you for years and years, Kvetan, really, really good option. Link below and cheers for watching. Bye, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We've got extra videos on Patreon, t-shirts on Spreadshirt, and I hope to see you for the next video.